Babysitting is a vital role in many families, providing much-needed relief and personal time for parents. Beyond merely watching children, babysitters are entrusted with the care and safety of little ones, becoming an essential layer of protection. However, the narratives around babysitting often include chilling tales of danger, with movies and TV shows depicting scenarios where teenage babysitters face threats of being stalked, kidnapped, or worse. While these stories are often sensationalized, they are rooted in unsettling real-life events, some of which remain unresolved and hauntingly mysterious. Today, we delve into five unsettling cases of babysitter disappearances that continue to perplex investigators and families alike. Lori Jean Lloyd's disappearance is steeped in the complexities of family conflict and youthful rebellion. On February 11, 1976, the 14-year-old was babysitting in Kettering, Ohio, alongside a friend. Around midnight, Lori's mother decided to check in on the girls. To her dismay, she found Lori's friend present, but no sign of Lori herself. The friend claimed that Lori had gone to a nearby 7-Eleven store, but had yet to return. An investigation quickly revealed that Lori hadn't been seen at the convenience store that night, raising alarms about her whereabouts. It soon surfaced that Lori had been discussing plans to meet an unidentified boy, with whispers of a plan for the two to run away to California. However, this lead was never substantiated, particularly since Lori left behind all her personal belongings. As time passed, the case grew cold. But in 1980, the Lloyd family stumbled upon a documentary about the drug epidemic in California. A girl in the film bore a striking resemblance to Lori, reigniting hope that she might still be alive. However, attempts to locate the girl and secure signed release forms from the production company yielded no results. The questions surrounding Lori's fate remain unanswered. Did she run away and fall into a dangerous situation? Or was she abducted and murdered? As the years slipped by, Lori Jean Lloyd, who would now be around 62 years old, remains a missing person, leaving her family haunted by the uncertainty. The story of Evelyn Hartley begins on October 24, 1953, in La Crosse, Wisconsin. At just 15 years old, Evelyn was approached by a professor at a local college, who needed someone to babysit his 20-month-old daughter for the evening. Though Evelyn had initially planned to attend a homecoming football game that night, the regular babysitter was also unavailable, presenting Evelyn with an opportunity to earn some extra cash while studying. At around 6 p.m., Professor Ross Rasmussen picked Evelyn up and took her to his home on Hosa Drive. Before leaving, Evelyn's father instructed her to call home at 8 p.m. to check in. When that call never came, Mr. Hartley grew worried and decided to drive over to the Rasmussen house to ensure everything was all right. Upon arriving, he found the front door locked, but the lights and radio were still on. After knocking and ringing the doorbell with no response, he peered through a window and saw Evelyn's glasses and one of her shoes lying on the floor. Alarmed, he walked around the house looking for an opening a neighbor noticed Mr. Hartley's distress and joined in the search. Inside the house, they found the toddler fast asleep in her crib, but Evelyn was nowhere to be found. The sense of dread heightened, prompting Mr. Hartley to call the police. Their investigation unveiled harrowing details. They discovered prime marks on the windows, indicating multiple attempts to break in. Blood traces were found near the basement window, and a bloody handprint was located on the garage wall, matching Evelyn's blood type. The police suspected that Evelyn had been forcibly taken from the home, possibly carried out into the yard a manhunt was launched, complete with tracking dogs that followed her scent, which abruptly ended two blocks from the Rasmussen home, suggesting she had been placed into a vehicle parked there. The search expanded dramatically, 
involving local authorities, community members, and even volunteers from the National Guard and Air Force. Police urged hunters to remain vigilant as they scoured the woods, and they even dug fresh graves in a desperate attempt to find Evelyn. Checkpoints were established, scrutinizing every vehicle passing through the area. Despite the extensive efforts, Evelyn's fate remained a chilling mystery, marking one of Wisconsin's largest missing person cases. As the years turned into decades, numerous theories emerged, including the chilling possibility that she may have been the victim of a serial killer. However, this theory was largely debunked. Tragically, Evelyn's parents passed away without ever knowing what happened to their beloved daughter, who simply wanted to help by taking a babysitting job. In the quiet village of Standard, Alberta, Canada, the lives of the Cook family were forever altered on April 22, 1981. Their 15-year-old daughter, Kelly Cook, received a phone call from a man identifying himself as Bill Christensen, who was looking for a babysitter for his child later that evening. It would be Kelly's first babysitting job, and she was eager to take on the responsibility. However, before accepting, Kelly consulted her mother, who wisely advised her to do some background checking on the man. Kelly learned from her classmates that they had never heard of him. Christensen was a common surname in the village, and her friends reassured her that it was likely safe. With that reassurance, Kelly returned home and assured her mother everything would be fine. Trusting her daughter's judgment, Mrs. Cook reluctantly agreed. That evening, a car pulled up outside their home. Kelly said goodbye to her mother, stepping into the unknown. It was the last time her family would see her alive. As hours passed without a check-in call from Kelly, worry began to mount. Mrs. Cook called around town, inquiring about the supposed Bill Christensen, but no one could vouch for him. Fear escalated, and they quickly contacted the police. An extensive search was initiated, involving roadblocks, searches of local woods, ditches, barns, and abandoned farmhouses, but no trace of Kelly could be found. Two months later, on June 28th, a grim discovery was made. Teenagers, exploring the shores of Chin Lake, stumbled upon Kelly's body, bound with rope and weighed down with cinder blocks. The sight was horrifying, but somewhat shocking was the fact that she was fully clothed when recovered. An autopsy revealed no signs of sexual assault, but authorities believed she had died by strangulation, leaving the community reeling in disbelief. The news of Kelly's abduction and murder sent shockwaves through Standard. Her parents were consumed with regret, feeling an overwhelming burden of guilt for allowing their daughter to go with a stranger. In the wake of the tragedy, the village raised a reward of $100,000 for information leading to the capture of Kelly's killer, but the amount remains unclaimed, and the case has never been solved. Bill Christensen, if that was indeed his real name, was described as being in his 30s or 40s at the time of Kelly's disappearance. If he is still alive, he would be in his 80s now. As time marches on, the haunting question remains. Who was responsible for this horrific crime, and why has justice evaded Kelly Cook's family for so long? Long before the advent of modern job search websites like Glassdoor or LinkedIn, people relied on newspapers to advertise their services. This was a route taken by 14-year-old Margaret Fox, whose innocent pursuit of a babysitting job would unknowingly plunge her family into grief and confusion. On June 24, 1974, Margaret informed her parents that she was set to meet a man named John Marshall. He had responded to her babysitting ad, and after a postponed meeting, they had finally arranged to connect. The man instructed Margaret via phone to look for a red Volkswagen, when she arrived in Mount Holly, a town in Burlington County, New Jersey. Accompanied by her younger sister, Margaret headed to the bus stop, waving goodbye as she boarded, unaware that this would be the last time anyone would see her. When Margaret failed to return home, her family immediately reported her missing. The ensuing investigation revealed a disturbing truth. The phone number provided by John Marshall traced back to a payphone. This raised suspicions that the job opportunity was nothing more than a ruse, and the name may have been fabricated. For days later, a phone call brought a chilling twist to the case. 
A male voice demanded a ransom of $10,000 for Margaret's safe return. In the recorded conversation, he ominously stated, $10,000 might be a lot of bread, but your daughter's life is the buttered topping. Despite the gravity of the threat, law enforcement struggled to identify the caller, leading to a frustrating stalemate in the investigation. As years passed, the case grew colder, but sporadic developments brought fleeting hope. In 1992, a body was discovered in Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey, that bore a striking resemblance to Margaret. However, DNA testing ultimately revealed it was not her, plunging the Fox family back into despair. Nearly half a century later, the mystery of Margaret's disappearance lingers. The community of Burlington continues to grapple with the unresolved fate of the girl who vanished on an ordinary day, and the identity of her abductor remains a haunting mystery.